Okay, that was the usual wreck on the, uh, the recording trigger, but I'm ready. Welcome to the Straight Red Card. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Good morning, Sao Paulo. And that is all because today on the show, we have Filippo Silva, also known as Tactical Manager. And, you know, it's great. He's our second go uh, guest to come on the show. He doesn't talk a lot about the Sonora brothers, but he does cover Johnny Cardosa. All right, Filippo, thank you for coming on. Thank you for I, I thought you were gonna hype me up or something. So <laughs> I'm I'm joking. So <laughs> you, need no, you need no hyping, my friend. That's why none is necessary. You are actually, the man on YouTube. I just started covering the Sonora brothers from Argentina, Joe and Alan. Right? Is that Alan, yeah. Is that because some guys were pressuring you to do so? It, it's because you it's because you called them out last uh, last um, video. Yeah, I, w I was. My Brazilian <laughs> side was very reluctant to cover Argentinians, but but there was so much pressure. So many people wanted me to cover them. So I was just like, all right, let's start covering these guys. I already have Paramount Plus anyway. Let's start watching them a little bit. I used to watch more of the Argentinian league when I lived in Brazil. Yeah, and then you know, uh, one of the two. At Independiente had what two goals this weekend, so it's like all right, yeah. all right we got to pay attention to that. Um, mm -hmm. But in this first segment with uh, Filippo, we are going to talk about first of all, we're going to start with our kind of overall thoughts about the roster that Greg picked, and then we're going to talk about because of that roster that Greg picked, what kind of formations are we looking at versus the three teams we're about to play, and we'll. We'll get to that, and of course, we'll talk about El Salvador, Canada, and Honduras. Um, so that's. Let's start with you, Filippo. I already kind of know what your general thoughts are about the roster, but was there anybody that you thought was left out? Yeah, so it, it's tricky to say left out, right? Because we don't know the situation with each guy. Like Chris Richards, apparently, is getting the transfer, so maybe Greg left him out to figure that out, even though we might not agree with it. Uh, Maybe there was some talks there, some reasoning. Matthew Hoppy. There's a couple of names I think were left out. I think even Eric Williamson could have been there, but that that's that that goes against Greg's favorites, right? I think it's not really about who's not there. It's more about who's there. And I think yeah. Greg put up a good roster. That's what I was telling. Even though people love to call me negative, I think he did maybe the best roster I've ever seen in the U.S. men's national team. But at the same time, it doesn't mean we ignore certain names that might have not should have been there, right? So I don't think Tim Ream should have been there. And I don't think Rodon should have been there, except for the fact that he'll face his brother. Besides that, I don't think there's other reason for that. So I thought there were other names that should have been there. Uh, but overall, it's it's really hard to criticize this. Uh, Greg did a couple of things I didn't expect. I didn't think he was going to call Conrad de la Fuente. And he did. And so big props to that. Uh, I thought he was going to call Vines over Bello. He called Bello. I like that as well. So Props overall, but I think I would say the biggest snub to me was probably Chris Richards. Hmm. Yeah, and then, of course, Richards goes and gets his um, his loan. I think it's close, right, at Hoffenheim? Mm -hmm. it was, is that official? People have been talking about that on Twitter, and they're talking about how the account that's breaking it is kind of like a kind of a spoof account. I don't know. <laughs> So I, I don't know how, I don't know how legit that that transfer rumor is unless you guys have more information on the matter. Hey, I but. went on transfer market today, saw nothing official, but it could all happen tomorrow, and then talks are advanced. Listen, it would be a great move for him. He needs to get out of Iron because he's going to play like little tiny minutes, and that's about it. Yeah, Derek, it's what I said. Uh, Chris Richards needs minutes in the top leagues, not bench minutes on the top club of the league. That's what he exactly. needs. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's why he was left off, I think, in Greg's mind. And this is sort of a trend we had talked about on a past show, Filippo, and that is when Greg senses that a guy's having a little bit of club, you know, issues, or he might be transferred or whatever, he kind of lets them stay home, uh, with some exceptions, of course. But uh, he did bring Yedlin, and Yedlin's not having a good time right now at Galatasaray. Yeah, but Yedlin won him over at that Mexico game, right? The guy showed up to play in that game. He cramped up, obviously, but when he was there, he was a strong presence, uh, and I think that's where he won. I think Julian Green was also another snub. I think Julian Green deserved a call to at least be around, 
right? If we are going to give Jackson Yeo chances, we're going to give Acosta so many chances until he finally plays. We're going to give Rodon chances. I think Julian Green deserves a chance. And I don't think he ever actually did. Julian never got called up by Greg, actually. Never has. I oh. believe he wanted to call him up. Yeah. For um, Gold but, uh, and Pete mentions this a lot. He's like, oh, man, Greg should have forced, uh, you know, Groyther Firth's hand on that one. And I kind of disagree because it was the start of a new season, right? And that was for what? Nations League, right? Brett? It was for Gold, Gold Cup. Cup. Gold, Gold Cup. Gold Cup. Gold Cup. Okay. And then, of course, the whole argument is that, you know, he was starting a brand new season in the Bundesliga. His team had just been promoted. It, they were taking on this huge beast of an animal, and they were going to be fighting to stay up from day one. And I think that's kind of why – um, I was okay with it at the time, but you're right. I think this would have been a nice place to put him, but at the same time, where do you play him um, in Greg's system? I guess that's the question. Well, I mean, he, he plays a double, he plays usually with dual eights, right? So it's Weston and someone else. Preferably you want Reyna to be there to have some creativity off the midfield, <laughs> but is, is Green going to cover less ground or do less than Sebastian Legette? Um, okay, let's say he does because I don't want to bring the the Sebastian Legette fans here to start cursing on your channel and everything. So, I was about to say so, something okay, about him, though. Yeah, so but but Green can be an option off the bench, right? I think Rodon. So people have been saying this is not the time to experiment, and I agree, it's not the time to experiment because now it's it's the World Cup qualifying. But I think Rodon has been an experiment that hasn't worked. It just yes. hasn't worked. Yeah. This experiment. Try to try time to try something else. You know, and we played rolled on everywhere, right? We played him out as a winger. We played him at center midfield. You know, why not give Green a run? But the thing I think maybe for Greg is the comfort level, which that's what it comes down to for Greg. He likes things he knows. Yeah, but the thing is, uh, you you got to make tough decisions when you're a coach, right? Oh yeah, no, I I agree. Um, but I do think that we've come to terms, I don't know if everybody has, with the fact that Greg's kind of predictable in that way, although he'll shock you every once in a while and pick a player you just didn't think was going to come. He continues to he's fuck over my predictions every week. Yeah, yeah. He, he's pretty good at that. And uh, and the thing – so there, there's, there's good and there's bad with Greg, obviously. Uh, one of the things that's good about Greg, in my opinion, and I haven't seen – actually haven't seen anyone say this actually but when it comes to coaching and anyone i'm not a professional coach but i know professional coaches and i've talked to them and i've talked to one for example that was a brazilian u20 coach in the past i played soccer with him a lot his name's nate franco actually if anyone wants to look him up he actually brought up neymar to the brazil u20 system so the thing is in the national team level the key to success is keeping it simple with your formations and your tactics because you don't have as much time as the club level, right? right. And Greg, there is issues with the team, it's true, but he has been consistently keeping it simple, right? He he continue, like he tries the same style of play, same formation. He changes, if he does a three in the back, it's usually very similar. He's not overthinking or doing crazy things like Pepe Guardiola tries at times. And that's very important for a national team coach. Keeping it simple is key because you don't have enough time with the players as you have in the club level. And Greg worked for a while in the club level. So one thing I feared was maybe him, you know, bringing club level habits into the national team and that he did not bring. Oh, so that well, uh, the, the tactics in the Canada game was was uh, unique in its own right. I mean, he's, he's, how'd it he's, go? <laughs> well, it, it was going fine up until an injury. <laughs> no, but no, consistently he's been a four-three-three guy. He's had a couple three-four-three yeah. matches, and like I said, the Canada game was a unique one out of three-five-two ish. Um, yeah. Then you know, obviously pushing of. stands up, so that was a bit unique in its own right. Um, yeah. No, but, it's well. It, go ahead. I was going to say it's a big change from where Greg was when he first started. You could see some of the tendencies that you were talking about, Filippo, early on. He had a this really. This, this vision, this idea that he could, you know, take this uh, national team and coach it like a club team, and it, he, he found out it didn't work. So 
once he kind of figured that out and he knew there was going to be little time for him to work with all these players, I, th I think it was a lawless that cornered him and asked him the question, hey, you haven't had these guys around. Are you going to have to compromise? And he said, yes, I am. I'm going to have to keep it simple from here on out. So that was a yeah. big change for him. It was a big change. And it was nice to see because prior to Burhalter, we had a very stubborn manager, um, Mr. Klinsman. And it was nice to see that Greg was, you know, open to trying something. Um, yeah, different I, and I have my main, my main issue with Greg in regards to keeping it simple is the most successful national teams we've seen in recent history. And you guys can go back in time and look at it the coaches usually play the players in the position they play in the club because it's a lot easier to implement that, and that's how you keep it simple. So uh, just right. go go by France a little bit, go back to Spain. The tiki-taka that they played, it's very similar to how the Barcelona players played, and that's what conducted that team. Uh, Italy, in the Euros, the players play very similar roles there in their clubs. Uh, if you go back, even Croatia, the way they work. So uh, and Greg, that's one of the issues I have with him at times, like, for example, Reyna. Um, but at the same time, if you think about it, I'm not being too fair to him because he played Reyna as a winger and Reyna was being played as a winger for mm -hmm. Dortmund. So maybe right. now, maybe now that Reyna is being playing central for Dortmund, Greg's like, I'm going to continue to be consistent with that and I'm going to play him playing central. We'll see. We'll see what Greg will do. There's uh, the thing is, um, People like to pull when I criticize him, right? And just say, you only criticize me. I compliment Greg a lot, but I'm just also harsh on Greg. I'm both. Are you saying that uh, Adams as a right back was a failed experiment? <laughs> I mean, I mean, Nagelsmann, Nagelsmann did that quite a bit, didn't he? And then Jesse stepped in and said, nah, nah. it's not a right back. <laughs> no, Jesse, Jesse's like, I brought this kid up yeah. and he's not a right back. <laughs> Which, thank God. Um, because we need him to be playing that position if we're going to have him playing that position for us in the typical Brett uh, Greg four three three. Uh, I guess the question yeah. is though we've been we've looked at the fact that there have been six center backs called up, and everybody Filippo is saying, "Oh man, we're going to play three in the back or five, whatever you want to call it. We're going to go back to that." that that three four one two or that three four three that greg likes to play and uh but are we going to do that for every game i, I just i'm not sure if that's no. going to happen no no it's not going to be every game i think i think mainly i don't know about honduras yet i need to check their roster and everything i haven't looked into it i know albert ellis apparently he's not going to be there that's a pretty big deal uh i think are we going to – am I supposed to talk the formations I think Greg will go in these games? Oh, yeah, let's do start? it. Sure. Let's dive in, yeah. So I, I think, as I said, Greg's going to keep it simple. I think against El Salvador this Thursday, I think he's going to go on a 4-3-3. Yeah. Uh, yep. That's how I think he's going to go. And I don't want to spoil too much. I don't know when you're releasing this episode because I am doing a preview and I talk about this in the preview, so I'm going to talk about it here as well. Um <laughs> I, I tomorrow. Think Greg, it's coming out tomorrow. So we, we had it first. It's set here first. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Just, just try, to, try to upload it a little after. But, but look, uh, I think Greg's going to go for it. You, you have to beat Derek's 3 a.m. upload, though. So. Yeah. Yep. Oh, it's rough Derek, to beat that. On, <laughs> Sleep a little. Oh, he does till 2 p.m. That's true. I'll tell, I look, I'm, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it, but I'm going to leave it a little broad. Okay? So I'm not too specific. I think Greg's going to play a 4-3-3 and go all in because he knows the implications of not winning the first game. Yeah. Not winning the first game will bring back the, the ghost of Kuva in 2017. People will start to think we're not going to qualify, panic. We can't hit the panic button. This team is young. He understands the first game against El Salvador is the most important one because that's yeah. how they're going to build momentum. These kids, they're going to put the ghost of Kuva past them. If they don't do that, the pressure for the Canada game and Honduras game might be too much for them to handle. You know, I just watched the soccer OG, and he said a tie versus El Salvador is fine. No, what it's he... not. What? <laughs> it's what he said, man. What, what can I say? On cap on the no, road. Look, I mean, come look, on. <laughs> look, look, look. There's only a few teams that it's okay for us to tie away. And I know people are going to bring up the whole, it's so tough to play away in CONCACAF. I don't give a, can I curse here? 
Yes, no. we curse all the time. I don't give a shit. It's yes. not. It, I don't care if it's Concacaf. Look at El Salvador's team. They have Darwin Chetin on the midfield. He's not good. They have Alex Roldan. He's not good. They have four USL players, a bunch of players from the Salvadoran League. Their player, their dual national, that's supposed to be a superstar. I think it's um, Enrico Duenas. He plays for the Dutch second division. And look Josh, at our team. Yep, I know. And Josh Perez, think of that. He regularly starts for them now on occasion. And that oh. dude could has played three games in, or five games in three years. He doesn't even play look, for his Segunda team. Yeah, I mean, this is yeah, a win. I understand the game being tough because of the away environment. There's no excuse to not beating El Salvador. There's no excuse. Yeah. That's all I have to say. And no, a draw or a loss is absolutely not acceptable. It's devastating for me. And you know, it's one thing I know people say, oh, well, they're going to make us play on a goat patch or whatever. But honestly, it can't be. It's not going to be that bad. And they're no. not going to be actual goats on it, so we should be able to kind <laughs> of work around. They would the goats off hours before the match, at least, because they don't want the grass to get too high. So <laughs> there's that too. Um, so we've got some formation expectations, but I agree with you. I think versus El Salvador, it's a four-three-three attack. That's what we did last time. Greg's going to be aggressive aggressive against teams we're supposed to beat. And he's going to go on and get the goals. But then you get to Canada. Last time we played Canada, it was a 3-4-1-2. It was a It'll win. I think so, too. Oh, I think he's going to go for 3-4-2-1 three, uh, three, against Canada. The thing with Canada is they also go with three in the back, right? And Canada's main strengths are on the flanks. It's going to be yep. – they're going to exploit Alfonso Davies. And then on the right side, it could be Buchanan. It could be Larea. I don't know who they're going to play. Regardless, it's still a strong right side. So – or sometimes they even went with Laren on the wing. Sometimes they've done that. So – Yeah. But I think Canada might go with um, Buchanan on the right, Alfonso Davies on the left. And they might go with two strikers. They might go with Jonathan David and Kyle Laren up top. So – you need to have those three defenders in the back so you can manage those so you're not outnumbered in the back. And you can also cover four of the fullbacks because you can't mess around with Alfonso Davies, right? That's no. that's um, a player that's a, a starter for Bayern. And the same way no one's going to sleep on Pulisic, on Gio Reyna, Alfonso Davies is is as that. He'll, he'll, he'll break your team if you allow him to. And they also have a very dangerous nine, Jonathan David. So I think we're going to go three in the back against Canada. Honduras, like I said, I don't know. I don't know. I think if you go back and you look at the times that Greg has played the three in the back, um, it's usually against, it's like we said, Canada already, right? Um, mm -hmm. He's sort of worried about Jamaica's speed on the wing, so he played a 3-4-2-1 the last time we played against them. During the Nations League, he played a 3-4-3 against Mexico, if I can remember correctly. And mm -hmm. it's three, four, three, other, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so teams where he's so, worried about the edges, yeah. Go ahead, Brad. I was say going purely off soccer waste formations, uh, Martinique, we played a three, four, three, yeah. Um, Jamaica, uh, they had listed as a four, three, three, although I didn't really, really look at the roster to verify that. Um, Canada was a three, five, two, or some variation of so sorts. Nations League, Mexico's three, four, three, and Northern Ireland was three, four, three, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, the, but you guys, you got, we got to remember why does he use three in the back? It's because our fullbacks can't defend. <laughs> yes. That's, that's a good, <laughs> that's a good part. Greg is just trying to fix that issue. He's just looking at it. He's like, it's not okay. It's not like they can't defend, right? Dest is not horrific on defense. Neither is Robinson. Uh, I guess Yedlin is fine on defense, to be honest. But better. the thing is, yeah, better. But Greg is aware that. Our best fullbacks, which are Dest and Robinson, are not the best on defense. So having three in the back allows them to make mistakes. So I guess. Get, given given we've already we've already talked about having the six center backs and how most people are thinking that we're going to be playing with a three back line. Um, if we were going to go with a more if we we're going to go more four three threes, I find it strange that we would take Yedlin over say Moore, who's better one v one defender. So I mean that that. that I'm looking. I'm looking at the formation. I see what the, you're the saying. Player yeah. pool as a whole, and I see 
We already talked about El Salvador being a 4-3-3. We talked about Canada being a 3-4-3. And I think we're going to play a 3-4-3 against Honduras, too. Just given our player pool. Mm-hmm. That's just my take. It's possible. Honduras is dangerous in transition. We have to be able to, to protect that, right? Um, and, and that's the two, that's that's something Greg's tactics have lacked, right? Because when you when you when you when you're making up a team, there's the essentially the, the three main phases are the the transition from defense to offense, offense to defense, which is the counter essentially that we get, and there's the defensive shape and the offensive shape. We've been fine on the defensive shape and offensive shape, right? Would we agree on that? We've been fine. Yeah. But we've we've been poor on the transition. We haven't been good on counters. We haven't scored off counters. We haven't been good on counters. I think we haven't scored off. At least no goal comes to mind right now. No. And we haven't defended very well in transition. So these two phases are not doing too well under Greg so far. And I want to see how he'll deal with that. I think Tyler Adams playing is going to fix – the issues with the transition on defense, mm-hmm. right? From offense to defense. And the way for him to fix maybe counters is maybe playing Giovanni Reina central. Reina is pretty dangerous in transition. We're seeing that in Dortmund. Mm-hmm. I agree. Well, I, was, I just – go ahead, Brett. I was going to say, I was going to bring up – you You mentioned uh, Tyler Adams being the key, uh, key player on the transition game because we've been playing Acosta and Legette and Yule or some variation around there. It can be mixed. I mean, McKinney's in there as well whenever we're in Europe and stuff like that. But – we have a lot of uh, a lot of back passing, non forward mo- motion, uh, creative, non creative people that have been uh, running our midfield for a while there. So hopefully it changes. Mm-hmm. Well, you're definitely going to see Adams and McKenney. Sure. Um, the question is, you know, do you move Reina down into that other eight slash ten? Which, if for Greg, it's just an eight. I, I've I've never seen that player be an actual eight deck slash ten. And because uh, it's, it's always been legit. Well, I know, but Reina, will he? Is it out of Burhalter's comfort zone to actually do what we all collectively think he should do, which is move Reina to the midfield? And my answer to you is no, it's not. It's out of his comfort zone at this point. He you might do it. No, I don't think it's going to be. I don't think he's going to do it, especially. In the, I don't think he's going to do it in the first match because, as we talked about earlier, he wants to get off on the right foot. He wants to get that win. He's going to go with what's comfortable. Um, with the injury to uh, Tim Weah, um, it's probably, and if he doesn't replace Tim Weah with somebody, it's less likely that he'll push Rain in the back because then at that point, we've got two starting wingers and we got two backup wingers. So I just I don't know if he'll opt to move one into centrally located at that point. I agree. I think Tim Weah's injury uh, pretty much reduced the odds of him playing Reina Central. But I, I think Greg playing Reina Central is inevitable, right? Along the World Cup qualifying. Eventually, I think it'll happen. Will it be mm-hmm. in this camp? Maybe not because of Weah's injury definitely will, will, will force Greg to maybe keep Gio there. But eventually he will. It also depends a lot on... So, like you said already, Tyler and Weston are lock-in starters. Now, who's that third midfielder? He might go with Acosta, Legette. I think he's going to go with Legette, at least for the first game. It's going to depend on how Legette, Acosta, and Roldan do, right? If if they're horrible, he could just have to move Reina Central. If they're holding their own just fine, then maybe he's just going to keep Reina wide. I think there's a lot of variables we're going to have to look into, and it, it has to do on how these guys will perform. Because he's not going to he's not going to bench McKinney or Adams unless he's resting them. Legette, Roldan, or Acosta, he will bench them if they're not playing well. Um so we need to see how they're going to be performing. Yeah, and some people predicted that, you know, we could see a, the craziest lineup ever in El Salvador to just save people's legs for the Canada game and the Honduras game. I mean, what do you think about that? It's what I said before. I think I think Greg's a lot smarter than that, and he knows that losing or tying to El Salvador could start a pretty bad chain reaction right there. Yeah, you got to start off. Hot. Mm -hmm. Got to start off hot. There's no doubt about it. So formation, final for all three of us. I say he's going to play a 4-3-3 attacking against Honduras because I think think he believes we're a better team, and I think that's what he's going to do. What do you guys got, Filippo? 4-3-3. 4-3-3 against uh, against El Salvador. 4-3-3. No, I meant Honduras. Oh, Honduras. I think Honduras, he might actually go with perhaps – a three four two one, which I think that's how he's gonna play against Canada as well. Okay. Okay, so we, we 
you've got, or uh, essentially a four three three versus El Salvador, and after that, some version of three four three, whatever version that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three four three, or maybe a three four two one, something like that against Canada and Honduras. But El Salvador, I think he's going safe with a four three three. And again, it's not acceptable to not win. And I think we are going to win. Brett, who do you got? What formation for Honduras? Uh, I said a three four a three four three. Okay, so you guys are in mind, and I'm I'm the one. Kind Our of player pool just plays too much into the fact that he's going to play a three back line against more than just Canada. I think. Well, no you reason know bring, you... There's no reason to bring six center backs if you're only going to play a three a three back line for one game. Yeah. Uh, and you know what, of course, Jimmy Conrad would say to all three of us at this point, right. which is <laughs> <laughs> no, Jimmy Conrad would say we're fools for thinking and talking too much about formations, but that's OK. I think the game has changed and I think those kind of things really uh, and I think even back in Jimmy's day, that was the case. But uh, uh, we're going to move on to segment two again. Check out tactical manager on youtube if you have not checked it out yet you must check it out soon Filippo. or don't or don't <laughs> that's what yeah, we say yeah, too. don't just just make sure you like and subscribe us yes yeah. and for <laughs> and, and for those of you wondering if Filippo, because we had a lot of people saying oh man you guys got to have the show because you drink on your show is Filippo going to get drunk on the show i said no he's not but then you you know you brought this full glass of vodka on range when in Rome, you know, agua, agua. Okay. Yeah. Uh, even sure. my mom can speak that much Spanish. All right. <laughs> until the Portuguese. next. Portuguese. Until... Oh, oh, but it's the same word in Spanish. No, it is. It is. It is. But it's, I I'm saying it in Portuguese. Agua. Okay. Does there a different pronunciation I'm missing? I don't know. I, 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 my Spanish is, is pretty bad. We can ask Sam. Sam. Sam has been working on his Spanish. He's been working. You're doing a lot of tongue exercises and rolling those R's, you know? Oh, that's gross. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got to say, Filippo, your Spanish with the word water is phenomenal. The best right? I've ever seen. It is. Damn good. All right. We're going to be back with second segment two with Filippo in what? The next day. So join us again. And we're going to be talking about, well, what we should expect in point-wise out of the next three games. Until then, from the straight red card, we'll see you soon. <laughs>